Hi, for this video, what we are going to do is we're going to let P and Q represent two statements. We're going to create a truth table that includes the implication, the converse, the inverse, and the contrapositive. So let's just discuss these really quickly. The implication, remember, is an if-then statement. Symbolically, we write this as if P, then Q. Okay. The converse switches the if and the then statement. So this would become if Q, then P. The inverse negates both statements. So the inverse is if not P, then not Q. Okay. And the contrapositive puts both of them together. So it's if not Q, then not Q. P. So when we create our truth table for this, we're going to start with our two variables that we were given, and these can be any two letters that you are given to represent the statements. So we always start there. That's the starting point for any truth table. So when you have two statements, remember that it always follows the pattern true, true, false, false, and Q is always true, false, true, false. Okay. I'm also going to create, because some of these contain um, the negation or the con sorry, the negation or the complement of the statement, I'm going to create a not P column. This tilde means not. It's called the negation sometimes, it's called the complement sometimes. We call things a lot of different um, terms in math to make it more confusing. So not P is the opposite of P, so I would have false, false, true, true. And then I'm going to add a not Q column. And this one would be false, true, false, true. Okay, so we're going to start with the implication. So if P, then Q. Remember that the implication is only false if the if statement is true, but the consequence is false, or the then part is false. So true, true results in a true statement. True, false, this is the only time that it is false because the if part was met, but the promise was not kept. Okay, um, false, true is true, and false, false is also true. For this one, I know it kind of sounds counterintuitive because you have a false if part, but there was the condition wasn't met, but the other part could still happen. It is possible that the other part is still going to happen just because. Okay, um, and nobody broke their promise, so you can think of it as the promise was not broken, so um, it's still a true statement. All right, so let's go to the converse. If Q then P. So this time you have to look at it in a certain order. So we have to look at Q first. So we have true followed by true, which is true. We have false followed by true. Remember that one is true. But true followed by false is where this one is false. So this one is different than the last one, only in the middle part. So when you switch the true and the false statements for the first and the second, um, this is where the implication and the converse differ from each other. All right, so the inverse is we're going to look at not P, then not Q. So we have to look at the not P column first, followed by the not Q column. So false, false is going to be true. False, true is going to be true. True, false is going to be our false statement. And true, true is going to be true. If you notice, these two columns are the same. The, um, sorry, the converse and the inverse will always be the same as far as truth values go. So the converse and the inverse are the same truth values. All right, for the last one, we are going to do the contrapositive, which is not Q followed by not P. So this time we want to look at not Q first, then not P. So false, false is going to be true. True, false, remember that's when it's false. If the 
if part is true followed by a false consequence, that's when it's false. Okay, um, false true is true, and then the last one is true. And if you notice, these are the same. So the implication and the contrapositive will always be the same as far as truth values go. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics that you would like to see, please let me know that as well.